போற்றுதும் கொங்களத்தார் சென்னி குளிர்வெண் கூடை போன்று அங்கன் உலகு அழித்தலான் அங்கன் உலகு அழித்தலான் ஞாயிறு போற்றுதும் ஞாயிறு போற்றுதும் காவிரி நாடன் திகிரி போல் பொற்கோட்டு மேரு வலம் திரிதலான் மேரு வலம் திரிதலான் மாமழை போற்றுதும் மாமழை போற்றுதும் நாம நீர்வேலி உலகிற் அவன் அழி போல் மேல் நின்றுதான் சூரத்தலான் மேல் நின்றுதான் சூரத்தலான் Invoking the moon, the sun, the rain, Mother Nature, the true goddess of the Tamils, through the beautiful verse of none other than the great Ilangu Vadigal from the first known Tamil epic, Silapadigaram. We are very happy to welcome you all today to the week 7 study of the book, Journey of a Civilization, Indus to Vaigai, yet another step towards discovering our roots. Today we will be discussing chapters 12, 13 and 14 case studies on Kungu Vellalars, Nagarathars, Vanni legend and Kannagi legend. Who else would be apt to present it to us today other than Thirumuga Anita Rajesh Amma who received the title Ulaga Perum Tamilar at the International Silapadigaram Conference held in 2021. She always proudly says that reading is my profession. Her passion is reading has her passion and reading has now branched out into writing poems, stories, and essays. She has published a collection of short stories on Amazon Kindle called Chill Karupati Sirikadegal, a collection of poems titled Saral Ni Salaram Nan. Both these works are highly recognized and awarded by various publications. She currently authors Davam, Tamil Vasipin Manam, a weekly magazine on Amazon Kindle, which today marks the 61st release of this magazine. Congratulations, Anita Amma. Uh, she is also serving as VP Education in US Tamil Toastmaster Group from April 2021. She is a great orator and has given Tamil speeches in several occasions for various Tamil Sangams in North America. Tirimuga Anita Rajesh, she's a native of Madurai, currently lives with a family in Atlanta and tutors high school and college students in math, science and computing. She holds a doctorate in computer science and engineering from IIT Madras and JOC organizing committee is so proud to have her today. Tirumiga Anita Rajesh Amma, I would like to invite you please to please present today's session for JOC. Welcome. Nandri. Anivarikum enivanakam. I am being honored to present uh, in this dais uh, the journey of civilization before the author, R. Balakrishnan, sir. Uh, I am being fascinated to come into this journey of civilization just because of the word Vaigai and nothing else. Vaigai brought me into this journey of civilization because I am from Madurai. Uh, Let's go into this. Like I'm being given the chapters 12, 13, and 14. And uh, okay. Uh, in the 12th chapter, we would be looking into the um, Indus Valley civilization uh, with respect to two case studies, Kongu and Nagratar. In the chapter 13, we would be looking into the anklets from Indus to Vaigai, how anklets are being used, and then uh, how the facts about it is being registered in our Sangam literature. And in the uh, chapter 14, we will be looking into the roots of one tree, uh, one knee, like uh, the tree and the things which is associated with that. And um, why these two communities? That's the question. Like uh, the author has clearly explained uh, that why we took these two communities for our research case studies. Why not the other communities? Indus Valley civilization in Kongo and Nagratar holds good just because of a primary socioeconomic uh, traits that follows. One is that agro uh, pastoral based community that is nothing but they do agriculture, they grow plants and also they raise the uh, livestock. 
that is being uh, carried over even now by the punguvela alerts and robust international and external uh, internal and external trade skills that is being taken care by natukote nagratars even today like they are known as known as uh, merchants and not only this is the primary reason we have a secondary re re reason which supports our uh, case studies why these two communities that these two people don't claim their current locations to be their place of origin they admit they are being migrating all throughout these time and uh, here you can see the overall tamil nadu map which will be giving us a wide um, um, view about where is tondai nadu where is nadu nadu where is kongu nadu where is chola nadu and where is pandya nadu and in in our case study we are talking about the kongu nadu and the nagarathas and typically the kongu nadu or the kongu country that we can see from the tamil, uh, tamil nadu map that is in the western districts of tamil nadu and the nagarathas we can see that that is the southeastern tamil nadu of it and uh, as i already said the kongu people like uh, they do the agro pastoral uh, things like that they practice the ag agriculture that would be doing the growing of crops and also raising the livestock and uh, in 12th century kongu mandala sadakam that is a sadakam sadakam is nothing but a satam which has a 100 um, uh, poems uh, and it is also a chitrilakam that is a short literature which would be defining the boundaries of that region which is talking about not only that we have similar uh, sadakams like sola mandala sadakam kongu mandala sadakam tondai mandala sadakam eela mandala uh, eela mandala sadakam like that so these things help us to know about the boundaries of those region which it is talking about in those times so this is being written in the 12th, uh, 12th century and we can know how back it is like uh, the facts and um, informations are from the 12th century like so it it means like it is before the 12th century what is being there that is being recorded uh, recorded in this book kongu nadu map like if you can see it like uh, the boundaries of the kongu nadu as said by that sadakam like the kongu mandala sadakam book it says that the it defines clearly the north south west and east of it as we can see that that it has a hill in one side and then river in other side and all of these we can look from the um, book and we can infer from it and not only that it also talk about 24 major nadu like uh, poondurai nadu uh, tenkarai nadu kangeya nadu and uh, araya nadu and then uh, kavat kavatika nadu like that so agricultural lands are being called as kaniyurs like uh, in those then like kaniyurs i think like kaniyur is means in a, in my, my uh, grandparents also used to say that kani like that the lands are called as kani from that thing and um, the mudal kani is being called as the foundation village which would be um, for the base of the agriculture growing and then um, making the people to live in a comfortable uh, state and uh, the kaveri the kaveri river like you can see from this picture the kaveri river starts from the north and it runs along the east along with its uh, tributaries like amravati noyal and bhavani why we talk about this is like uh we uh, recently have um uh the village near the river in the chennimala area that noyal river areas that kodumanal artifacts we have been uh, hearing in newspapers and things which helps us to uh, make our um, literature set back in a proof way to some pieces or like uh, uh, very early uh, centuries and uh, this is the kodumanal artifacts which helps us to define that that kongunadu period is being set uh, back into the 4th century bc so from these kind of things what we found is not only we talk about the literature this book not only talk about the sangam literature it not only talk about the artifacts but also it links these connecting dots actually i found this book as very interesting not uh, because of the fact it links my past to the present and hinders how my future should be in order to honor these past and the present so uh, i feel, i see lot of research oriented topics which are being presented to us in a way that that hinders our uh, interest in order to carry over all these um, research oriented uh, subjects in our sangam literature and also in our um, arch uh, archaeological uh, facts in the kongu map in the sangam period we can see that during the sangam age kongu nadu ruled by the cheras with karur as a capital we can see this and uh, kongar 
in Tamil means like the honey nectar of the flowers and kongam flower uh, is being used in the time in a uh, abundance in order to make garlands and kongu means uh, in this also like uh, kankanadu also we will be talking about it and the kongar uh, kongu plus ar that the people who live in kongunadu the kongar word in sa sangam period is being seen in paditrupattu Natrinai Agananur. In Paditra Patru, we can see that Nar Ari Naravin Kongar Kove. That means the king of the Kongar, famous for their honey. And in the Paditra Patru, Irvatrend, uh, 22, we can see that Ma Kelu Kongar Nadu, Agapaditha, like that Kongar Nadu, where that herds and cows are being surrendered by the water holes. It also says that, that they are not only about it, like they are being wealthy, they are being taken care of it. And they establish the uh, um, Kongunadu, like, and uh, they build the um, civilization. In Agananur 79, we can see that the Kungar Padumani, I am Nirk Nimirndu, wells being dug even in the hard and the rocky uh, terrain. That means the Kungars are very uh, uh, muscularly strong and things, and they do that so that the cattle herds can come and drink, and they, they will not be, they will not have any uh, unfertile lands, like the water helps them to have a fertility, and water helps them to raise their uh, thing, that makes the um, one uh, place more fertile. So they also dig the wells, and uh, this shows how they are being uh, strength, both muscularly, uh, doing agriculture, how they are fertile, and all the things. And in the Tamil literature, in uh, Tamil Sangam uh, literature, we can see that uh, in various things, like in um, Natrinai, Paditripatri, Agananuru, in these things, we can find that. I have given the uh, poem for this, uh, like when you want to watch it again or something, you can go to it. We can see the facts that Cholas has succeeded once, uh, Kongars, and then uh, Cheras has succeeded, and also like Pandyas has succeeded these Kongars. And these are being um, uh, evidently put in our Sangam uh, literature. Uh, songs, poems. And we can also see it, uh, we can come across in the literature that in a place named uh, Vagai, Congress won the Pandian chief, uh, chieftain, that uh, Adigan. So that is also being registered in our uh, literature. And uh, what about the Kongu people? Kongu people, they respect Tamil language. Kongu people are uh, how they uh, took the position of chieftains, ministers, army commanders, agriculturists, and poets. And um, as per the claim of uh, Ramamurthy, sir, like uh, Kongu Velalas, uh, that name came from the lineage of the Velir kings. And um, uh, that Velan Mai, we all already know that is an agriculture. And Velan is nothing, nothing but the agriculturist. And also Tolka PM talks about it. Velan Mandar Kutolil. Ulave, like that. So it says that agriculture is the uh, job of uh, Velan people. And uh, Kongu uh, Kuyavar, we know that they are the potters. And uh, uh, the famous poet uh, Kamban is also uh, claimed to be the Kongu, uh, one of the Kongu uh, community people. And uh, we also said that these two people uh, never had their, uh, they have been migrating. So they are, they are not in the correct uh, current place from the beginning. They have migrated all throughout and they are in the current uh, current place. So in the Tondai Nadu to Chola Nadu migration, they did that. And in order to remember how they do, uh, uh, remember uh, uh, how, they, how do they keep that in their memory? Like they have a song for it, like Virai um, Vittu Nangal Vandom and then Vadakirindu um, Vandavar, like that they have the songs that, that means we have come away from our native place and also we have come from the north. These are the things which uh, these songs, which are being still uh, being used, uh, those gives us the uh, knowledge that those people are being keeping that migration in their memory uh, due to these kind of songs. And also like um, in, uh, way towards in the Vellala relationship also we can see uh, detailed in the book. And um, I'm going to the uh, next session. And before that, they also have a memory song like Ilan the Perumaya meeted a Kuduom, like that. And we will meet to restore our honor, kind of that. So people like uh, all the community people, when they migrate from one place to other, and uh, what happens in their life is being carried over through the songs. And that memory is being taken over wherever they have migrated. And uh, uh, how they do the Congo water management, like we have been, uh, Hall will know, like uh, we are we are all uh, excited to see the Pauline Selvan in uh, a movie. And uh, also like in that, we will be talking about um, Chola Kings and then all those things. And uh, we also talk about um, uh, Yeris in that special. 
the similar way the kongu water management system the chola king karikalan has built a dam uh, uh, Kalanai, and that still we see it like that made of stones near the Kaveri in Trichrapalli. And these are the things which we can detailedly see in the books. And this gives us a feel that not only they are good at one particular thing, in order to make that as a civilization, they were doing best in all the possible ways. And uh, also I told about that there is a Kangayan Adil. From that we know that is the cattle family coming, uh, the Kangayam Kali. We have even seen in the bull uh, fight all those things. And that Kangayam Kali that they say that the cattle family that comes from the, uh, that came from the Pakistan kind of. And then uh, in the archaeology things, we I also already talked about the Noel thing uh, and also the uh, how, uh, the things which, you, which which are being collected like the gemstones, wing, shell industry, and all of these things. And next we will go to the um, name relation. See, in these things, hills, Malay, uh, uh, Varai, all of these means that it is a, a high things and those in those places, the Murugan or the Seven Temples are there. And also we can see, uh, see the similarities, like this name is being used not only in our Tamil Nadu, but also in various other parts of India or in outside India in some other countries. See, we call Alag Malay that is being Alag in Afghanistani and Ur Malay in Nilgiris, like Ur in Afghanistan and uh, Kaveri in our place and then Kaveli in Maharashtra. Like that, there is a connection of these names and this is how it works. Just... Okay. Next, we move to the Natakote Nagaratars. This community is known for trading and also as a merchants. And they currently live in the Chetinadu region of the southeastern the Tamil Nadu. These people also are the migrated people. And we say, when we say Natakote, that means country forts, like, like the uh, fort, uh, uh, the country made of forts. And Nagaratars means the people, the uh, people of the town. In Nagaram, we know it's a town and Nagaratar means it's the people of the town and townspeople and the migration it's being very clearly explained i was fascinated to read this and it has detailedly given it's a kind of a research work they have presented for us the nagaratas that though they are now in the southern eastern tamil nadu in the initially they had a original home base which is santhia of uh, naganadu in that in kaliyugam in 204 they migrated and lived in kanji town of tondai mandalam you can see from this they they lived in the tondai tondai nadu that can tondai mandalam and they lived for 2,108 years. And then in uh, uh, 2,312 of Kali Yugam, they migrated to Kaveri Pumbatinam of Chola country, the Chola Mandalam. And uh, there they lived for 1,463 uh, uh, um, years and migrated to Pandya country after some years uh, by the invitation of the Pandya king. And then they were like settled in uh, Iliyatankudi, west of the uh, uh, Karekkudi now. And this information is given after so many of this. And also the author clearly says this, don't look into the number of years, look into how the migration has happened, how they have moved from one area to the other area and how various things they have passed, like our, um, uh, like from Tonde Mandalam to Chola Mandalam, Chola Mandalam to the Pandian, uh, Pandya uh, Nade, all those things have to be articulated so that we know what a migration takes when a migration takes place how that takes place and what the uh, how the people will feel like those are being registered in their memory and that is being taken over from generations to generations and also the traders evidence from the roman the Greece, uh, that is also being available and not only that these people have not only traded within the land they also moved across the sea and they went off to indonesia burma malaya and Silom. That facts also being registered in our literature. And not only that, wherever they went, they carried the uh, Chetty Murugan, a Neolithic god. Now also we can see those gods in Cambodia, Bali, Thailand, and Malaysia. These are the things we can see from that. Not only that, now that the, when, when the boundaries which is being declared in the Nagarata region is the Bay of Bengal in the east, Vaiga River in the south, uh, Piran Malai Peak in the west, and Vela uh, um, River in the north, and not only that, in the center, they have a Kundrakudi Hills. And this is the one which defines about the boundary of the Nagaratars. And uh, not only um, it defines, we can also see the books which talks about it, which gives a proof about it. There is Tanavaisiya Ragi Nagaratar Saritaram. This is a book. And this books, 
in this tanavaisya means that is a san sanskritized word which means mercantile community that book talks about how this mercantile community moved and not only about it it gives facts about it and how they moved it and this books also plays an important role for us in order to counter check with our facts and believe in that it's not only we believe we we also counter check by uh, checking with the facts and checking with the uh, literature checking with the archaeological department uh, findings so we don't believe in our past without the current uh, authorical uh, proof of it that's the best thing i see from this journey of civilization book and in these chapters and not only that the how the social organization being with these people like that they had covils and they were uh, mary with uh, they not only do it they have a marriage with the other temple people and uh, that how they talk about it and villages are called as ur and they have a territorial bounded and that within that bound they they live as a group and then they migrate from one place to the uh, other and the nagrata how they do it north to south and east to west that's how the uh, town patterns are being always being uh, taken care and that's also being registered and uh, let's go to the uh, uh, facts which supports uh, from the sangam literature for this and silapathikaram trust this and nagratar men married velala women and uh, kaveri poombattinam that where the kaveri meets the bay of bengal festival and they have that festival in that and uh, pati um, uh, patinathar like the towns person like uh, they also uh, do the already as i said they move uh, to the sea and also they do the um, Uh, they uh, go across the sea and have some uh, trading uh, in the other uh, places and we also know the puhar festival like uh, devoted to the patinathar and that has happened in the puhar uh, place and um, patanam uh, there is a place in kerala called patanam and that uh, there also they did the archaeological digging and they find that artifacts that that place has uh, evidence of uh, 2nd century bc to 10th century uh, ce and this is how like we are not only talking about the literature we also talk about how we can say that with the proof uh, how we can make the uh, world to uh, look into the facts that not uh, that uh, we have a, a history from the indus valley civilization that our tamil literature has this dense knowledge and we can also know, we also heard about the stories about the karekalam ayar and uh, she is a uh, the one like female sign kind of thing and we don't even see the karekalamayar uh, statue in uh, uh, gange konda solapuram we see uh, in cambodia st uh, still an ancient statue which is being there for karekalamayar which has the similar kind of uh, things so we can see kind of lots of connectivity connecting dots not only in india but also throughout the world wherever we can find these artifacts and we can compare through it and um, uh, we also have the uh, in india like we can see that the sandhi like uh, in pakistani and sandhya in gujarat and uh, nagara in gujarat uh, gujarat and maharashtra and uh, natkot and chetti in pakistan these words can be seen there and karekudi uh, uh, we say karekudi here they have kare in pakistan and we also use the words ur puram vayal kudi kotai puri uh, mangalam and patti all those things are being used and this we can see in the kanchipuram like kanchipuram is a tamil word and kanchi is in pakistan kanchali in gujarat and uh, kanchipura in karnataka all these things says that there is possibility and there is a fact that these people migrated that's why these can be prevailing in a uh, in a wide range of regions and uh, we move to the chapter uh, i have covered the chapter 12 and we are going to the chapter 13 anklets from indus to vaigai that uh, we can see the mother goddesses in the dravidian scape how we do it like the kannagi we know kannagi is treated as a goddess in tamil nadu sri lanka not only here but also in maharashtra and gujarat and uh, goddesses Ka uh, kantikeshwari that is a kannagi temple in uh, janagat and uh, they have a story for it and not only that all the deities uh, deity has anklets there like uh, uh, not only here there also they have it like there is a story like king uh correction what happened it he lost a battle and uh, he went and worship the god the goddess is appear and she told him that wherever you go like uh, wherever he want that he can take her only one condition is that he should not turn and look back when he was going he uh, um, uh, the uh, goddess is following him like the, he is hearing the sound from the silambam from the anklet and suddenly when the, he was crossing a forest like he didn't hear the song so he forgot that he has a promise and what the goddesses has told he turned back and looked at the goddesses and she halted her journey 
and it is on the banks of the river Singoda. And that's the story of the goddesses uh, Kankeshuri. And this is how it is being said. And Bhaguchara um, uh, Mata in Gujarat, that she's a goddess of, on rooster. And she also has got a cut off breast. Like if you know about this uh, Silapati Karam, we know that Kanehi has uh, cut off her breast in, uh, in order to um, show her anger uh, uh, and also to show that uh, injustice should not happen. And uh, the same thing, like from these things, from the concept of anklet wearing goddesses, merchant communities, harassed women plucking uh, their breasts, and mother goddesses worship, from all of these, we have a memorial stones also regarding these. These have a common link that says Dravidian landscape is being widely uh, uh, there in many places. And uh, we are all uh, able to have the proof of it. And, uh, and uh, from the Silapadiharam, we know that uh, Silambu is the anklet and it's made of metal and both men and women wear. Silambu produces sound. And also uh, Silambu, uh, Silambu Kali Nonbu is seen in that um, our Aikuru um, Nuru uh, and Agana Nuru. What is that Silambu Kali Nonbu is uh, that we remove that anklet when the girl attends pu uh, puberty. Those things are seen in our uh, literature. And Silapadikaram, we know that Silambu plus Adikaram, it's nothing but the story of a humble anklet journey. And this story, not only talk about this, this also talk about the uh, three kingdoms. It integrates the three kingdoms. And uh, we also know that uh, Silambatam is a martial art which uses a stick, sil uh, Silambam stick. And they also wear anklets when they practice and perform that martial arts. And the Silapadikaram in the Sangam literature, we know that that Muvendar, I already told that it connects the Muvendar, that the three uh, region kings. Uh, the Silapadikaram flourishes the coastal merchant town that by, uh, when we see the Pumbukar, Kaveri Pumbatinam in Chula, Chola kingdom, that is the where the, that's a merchant town. In Madurai, the Pandian kingdom, that's where the aspire to start a fresh life. They came to that. And Manji, the Chera kingdom, where the Kandagi is uh, uh, elevated as a goddesses. And that's where the Chera and Chengutuan made her Kandagi as a goddesses. Uh, and that's how it's taken. And uh, we can see Kandagi Amman temple, not only in Tamil Nadu, but also in Kerala. And that's called as the uh, Mangala Devi temple. And uh, it is also worshipped in Elam. And Bhagavati is also called as the Kan The Bhagavati is the another name for the Kannagi there. And uh, this is how we are being keeping those memories from the Sangam and from the uh, Indus Valley to our modern um, days. And the Kannagi name in Sangam literature we can see in Purana Nuru 143. And there the uh, chieftain Began, his wife name is named as Kannagi. And in the Natrine song, we can see that uh, when a husband abandoned her, she will be cutting her breast. So this shows us the story of the Silapaligara must be sung in a folk style, like folk flow. And then after, after some time, Ilango Vadigal should have first documented as an epic because Natrine came earlier than the Silapaligara. These facts can be um, uh, underlined, uh, learned from this. And then uh, in, uh, we can see uh, Kanagi temple in Madurai, Selataman temple that there is a Kanagi ideal there. And in Tutukudi, they, we have a Kanagi temple. And... Um, Kannagi is a symbol for retribution, uh, uh, justice, and voice of a woman. And those days, like, it's being registered, and we also still carry over it. And um, Mother Goddess's worship in Indus is being uh, seen in the scene, and we can see that uh, a woman, anklet worn by a woman in Mohanjaro, and anklet made of bronze and beads, uh, and uh, uh, not only that, that uh, in this um, uh, thing, we can also see that they are trying to make a sacrifice to goddesses who reside in the trees. And uh, Harappans made not only real thing, but also their toys were wearing terracotta or metal anklets in the uh, in the things. And from that, we can see that anklets is being from Indus Valley till our Sangam literature and even now in our temples. And fig trees are considered to be sacred. And they, are, uh, they have the element central to the kingship. And it's also considered to be like fertility for women in IVC, not only there, even now, like um, uh, yeah, it's believed that if you uh, go around the uh, uh, trees and uh, if you pray that uh, um, yar, uh, when uh, consumed by the women helps them for the um, uh, fertility. And uh, we can also see other goddesses similar to this, uh, Kannagi, the same kind of goddesses uh, in Gujarat and other, other areas. And that's also being clearly said in the book. And now we go to the last chapter, the roots of the money, the tree of life. That's a, this is a medium-sized uh, thing. And it is a drought-tolerant evergreen tree. 
that's so fascinating like uh, it it can grow and it can never dry and it these leaves and pods can be the food for the animals in those deserts or the dry areas uh, and because it indicates the presence of water like and uh, uh, this also acts as an antidote to the pains or the bites which happen in those places and the uh, vanni that name refers to a eatable pot in malayalam and a tree in telugu and uh, this tree like uh, this is um, prosophis cineraria cineraria that this tree this has a we can see that uh, this uh, tree that come up, uh, we have a stamp also published in the year 1988 this uh, this tree is called in various names in various places in rajasthan it is called as kejri and sami and uh, in punjab it's called jan kandi kandi in sindh and semi in gujarati shami in odisha jami in telangana state and andhra pradesh bani in karnataka vanni uh, in tamil nadu and sri lanka gaf in ue in ue it is a national tree and it is illegal to cut the tree uh, in that country and not only that in rajasthan and in telangana these are the uh, vanni tree is uh, taken as a state tree and uh, we can see that uh, uh, this names which we talked about in in our, throughout india these various names these are being used as a prefix or a suffix Uh, in 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 literature or in the naming the cities or in these in our india and you can see this this is this number is also this chart is given in our journey of civilization book we can get more idea about it like we have proofs like that is being carried over from the past to the present and in tamil nadu we can see these vanni trees very old vanni trees can be found and in uh, meenakshi temple in madurai we can see that and i have seen one and um, core town of uh, korkai we can see this in tutukrin and uh, mar uh, marude uh, marudeshwara temple in uh, marudeshwara Mar marudeshwara temple in tiruvannur chennai we can see that this vanni tree also symbolizes courage peace and prosperity because we said that it's a evergreen tree and it is uh, it talks about that it's a uh, uh, sacred tree and so it talks about this in hindu mythology like we believe that vanni tree is always associated with goddesses durga and parvati and uh, it is also believed and uh, when you place a sami that is the vanni tree below and a pipal tree on a pipal branch uh, above and if you start rubbing it it produces fire so in some places in the literature vanni is also referred to as fire in the lexicon meaning it, it also gives but actually vanni tree uh, vanni is a tree and uh, it produces fire when it is being rubbed by that and uh, we can also see from the terracotta tablet of, which is being taken from the harappa thing uh, we can see that the uh, uh, it is worship uh, worshiped as a sacred tree uh, not only in, in tamil nadu but also in the entire indian subcontinent and people bilvam and neem these are all other sacred trees we also use mango jack and other trees that secrete milk fluid also being considered as a sacred trees vanni trees along with the other trees becomes a pa part of a sacred grove and in india uh, we have 13200 sacred groves such things it still prevails so uh, madhav sir says that the grove was said to be at the origin of the temple whose columns were initially trees so initially they were trees it's surrounded by the trees and later it was replaced by the uh, uh, structure the uh, column structure in mysore during the dasara uh, time uh they say that let me give you leaves of vanni trees and let them bring gold to you like that so stories about vanni vanni uh, trees prevail in andhra pradesh they say there is a, a, a shepherd king vanni tree helps to hide weapons from the enemies like uh, uh they say that the story is like the king wanted to hide the um weapons but he don't know where to guy uh, uh, hide so he keeps a, a corpus and like put it in that and then hang it over the uh, tree in that and in that case the weapons are only visible that he says that the vanni tree has to help him vanni has promised that it would be visible only to the king and others it would look as a snake or a devil and that's how and not only that in mahabharatam also we can see that when pandavas uh, left uh, they kept this weapons under the vanni tree and the tree protects their weapons until they return back and this kind of things we can see and also there is a folklore like around vanni tree they talk about it there is a story prevailing with these stories i'll complete it then madurai Uh, there is a 200 families in a village that ans ancestors lived in guntur trichy district before they went to uh, pudutamarai patti and they a young men fell in love with the girl of the another community but they didn't approve it they fled for life and um, they encountered a uh, river vanni tree was on the other side the, from the southern bank and that 
tree bent for the couples and the couples went on it along with the livestock and the couples migrated to uh, Maraganeri and uh, then to Andipatti and then to Karve Pala. Uh, uh, place and they lived and that's what's one of the story and another story is about the dindigal district where the two brothers lived a uh, village north of uh, uh, kosukurichi uh, kosukurichi like that interested in the same woman and one of them flees with the woman and the livestock and the people are chasing them they there also the river encounters one tree in the southern bank bends to the northern bank and they get into it the couple settles in the village near natham in dindigal in these two things we can see that they also have a song which remember uh, in their memory the tree saved them in order to do that they have it manni maram saind 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 suvanda makka like that and the common common in the stories we can see that they worshiped the one tree later and also they migrated from north to the south direction so though this uh, uh, folklore is around uh, uh in different places in different things but the core concept of migrating from north uh, northern to the southern part prevails and uh, vanni grow in the old tamil literature we can see that in puranaanuri it, it talks about vanni uh, that vanni woods are used as a uh, stirring thing and in paditru patru vanni mandrath mandrath means like the grounds with the vanni trees and in silapathikaram uh, vanchina malai uh, in that uh, they talk about the vanni maramam that when in kannagi addresses the pandian queen after they uh, fall of the um, pandian uh, she would be saying manni maramum madaipaliyum saandraga like that uh, uh, and in mani megalai also there is a manni mandram that is nothing but uh, inside that that mandram like it's being surrounded by the trees they cook uh, food inside that area from these things vanni is used as a con- in the context of a burial place or a sacred place and so on so this is the in the civilization we can see that a seal found in the moganjaro thing Uh, you can see that a uh, yeah, female being sit, uh, seated on a vanni tree and a tiger nearby looks at her this open up such challenge and a possibility to us that vanni tree can be a family tree for a cholas whose royal emblem is a tiger and this where i stop my uh, lecture and about this chapter uh, chapter 12 chapter 13 and 14 about um, kongu uh, uh, nagratars and um, uh kanne the legend kannaki and the the legend panni tree all these things thank you and i uh, i thank the joc team for giving me an opportunity to do this and also i thank uh, uh, dr balakrishnan sir for providing such a wonderful book which connects our past with the fu- uh, present and it makes us to take to the future thank you so much thank you so much uh, anita amma very well articulated presentation with all the important points highlighted with maps and pictorial evidences from the book and a lot of stories uh, uh, you imbibe a lot of stories into your narration and you very nicely connected all the points to the dravidian landscape thank you so much uh, for the presentation today uh, so let's move on to the next youth presentation we'll continue to discuss more about this topic in our q and a session so before that uh, in the words of swami vivekananda to the heroes of tomorrow to the energies that will define our future i would like to welcome selvi kavita sundara pandian for our youth presentation today she is a sophomore from bay area her interest in history led her to join the pilot group of the jsc book study and uh, she wanted to know more about tamils and their roots and she was a very active participant we are so happy to have her here again uh, for a short presentation welcome kavita uh hello everyone vanakkam i hope everybody has learned from today's lecture by anita anti i'm trying to speak a little slower compared to my last presentation so please bear with me i'm here to talk about what i found interesting in today's three chapters When we were reading this chapter last year, I had a discussion with my appa about Dr. Kosambi and how he reconstructed Indian history by researching the native tribes of India. Similarly, Bala Krishnan uncle researched Tamil clans like the Kongu and Nagarathar to connect the IBC and Tamil culture. The Kongu people are agro-pastoralists. They know the ins and outs of cattle breeding. The Kangaim bull is from the region and it is a bull with a big hump. We can see this bull in the IBC seals and its lineage can be traced back to Pakistan with the Zebu cattle. This is also evident in jewelry. The materials for the jewelry found in Kodumana can't be found in that area 
and they had to have been imported from Gujarat and Afghanistan. This shows that trade connected the two areas, meaning it wouldn't be a far stretch to say that they could have traveled from the IBC area to Tamil Nadu. This explains the cultural and economic exchange between the two areas. Many hills and hillocks in Tamil Nadu have the same names as the one in the IBC area, especially those pertaining to Shiva and Murugan. Another similarity is the hero worship stone found in the Konga region. They have a stone engraved with a man fighting two tigers, and there's a strikingly similar seal found while excavating the Indus Valley. This clearly shows that both civilizations shared the same past, proving that Indus people migrated to Tamil Nadu. The Nagarathar are another important clan in Tamil Nadu. They are merchants and their name clearly translates to city dwellers. And as we all know, the IVC was a city-based society. It is mentioned in many Sangam literatures that they have had to migrate a lot because of natural disasters wherever they live. So it is plausible that they could have traveled from the IVC to where they live now. We can see that in both Dhammer culture and IVC seals, that mother goddess worship was a prominent part of both cultures. The great Tamar epic Silapadigaram is about Kanagi and Anklet and the mother goddess. Anklets of the same style were worn by women in Mohenjo-daro, which is a city in the IVC area. Fig trees were a very superstitious and important symbol of Tamar kingdoms, and the same can be seen in the IVC with the way they had offerings in front of a fig tree on a seal. All of these and more have been thoroughly dissected in these three chapters to prove the IBC migration theory by Balakrishnan uncle. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Kavita, for sharing your takeaways from the chapters of Vellalars, Nagaratars, Kanagi, and Varni legend. It was very thorough. Um, most of you would have met her. Uh, she is daughter of one of our JOC com organizing committee members, Meena Sundar. Thank you again, Kavita. Uh, for being here with us today. Before we move on to the Q&A session, a small announcement regarding our next week's session. So our next session, which is week seven, module six, uh, will be presented by Tira Zulfi Kardin. Um, it will be on the chapters 15, 16, and eight, which are all based on the games of our past. So please spread the word uh, to all your friends and uh, hope uh, we'll have uh, maximum participation in our next week's session too. Um, thank you. So I think now we can move on to our Q&A session. I would like to invite Balakrishnan sir uh, to please uh, come ahead and say some uh, say a few words about our today's session. Thank you everybody. Uh, it's a phenomenal presentation I must say Anita Rajesh and uh, uh, very well read and then with uh, your background from IIT and an interest in Tamil and uh, uh, and you all coming from Madurai, I can understand. It's a, it's a phenomenal fellow. Actually, you, you really got the most important cracks and also Kavita, I think that uh, I really appreciate and uh, the kind of, uh, I, I always, in a way I make it a point to somehow try to so my face in either in the airport only last time I, I was actually on board I couldn't uh, meet and uh, now I in, in between I switched off the camera and finished my in between I my, my breakfast also so that I can run after uh, this program is over uh, so very very nice and uh, I think the American Tamils have taken the lead uh, and then uh, people from Iran joining from Singapore and uh, other parts of the world, people from Canada and everybody joining. This is the way we have to take it forward. First and foremost, uh, let me clarify, when we do this kind of conversation, uh, we have to be very, very responsible. Uh, we are not positioning uh, our culture, uh, our past in, uh, in comparison with uh, any other culture, any other people to degrade anybody, denigrate anybody, or to claim ourselves we are superior. I am a very highly inclusive uh, person uh, by nature brought up and my existence. So that, and then that is what the spirit of Tamil is all about. Uh, through this book, what I am trying to say, this book is in the, uh, almost is going to be three years, uh, three editions, and then no challenge, all good reviews, including Cambridge, uh, and then had this book uh, uh, created any false claim, 
or anything not based on evidence or very fable evidence, it would have been shredded to pieces by this time. I would have been heavily criticized. But then the fact remains that uh, no one has ever said they only read, either appreciated or kept quiet. Uh, so those who would be uncomfortable about the finding of this book, rather they would keep quiet so that this book is not become a, a point of talking uh, further. So these are the two responses this book has evoked. I am very happy about that. Uh, if you really look at it, this uh, today's topic, uh, uh, I will just uh, not in that order. Uh, I will touch upon some of the uh, key things which are operating in mind uh, when I am choosing this one. I was very, very conscious, as Sanita pointed out. Uh, I also been very, very defensive. And also this book actually will responsibly. Some of the finding I must have done in sometime in late 90s, something in the early 2000s. And then I must have got the whatever I've written in this book. I, I By this time, I was very clear in 2002 or 2003 range. I wait another eight years to announce in Quam uh, 2010 conference. Then I take another nine years to bring out as a book. So each one I incubate, I, I weigh every word. I have to make a responsible statement. I should not, uh, because I have nothing at stake. I gain nothing out of it. My my promotions, my elevations, my position in society or life, it's not determined by this. I'm not going to be a vice chancellor or a professor. So that I am in a way detached. I'm detached from the outcome. So I wanted to leave a legacy which is based on very fable fact. In the process, I got a dilemma. I know that when I talk, I don't really, I am not a costist. So when I try to put a case study of two communities, uh, Nagarattar and Kungu Velalar, I know uh, some question may be asked. Once the it's it's becoming a, a IVC legacy holder is not a joke. When you say that uh, you are the legacy holder of a 5,000 year old civility, it's a civilization, you are part of that city, you are the legacy holder, you carry that particular uh, marker, then it's a, it's a, in a way it's a great honor. But then there is another danger that uh, if some community, suppose that you, this case study will be valid for anybody. Actually, if you see that uh, this book contains a case study about three groups. One is Kongu Velalar, another is not to Chattar, and a deep uh, case study about the pot making uh, potters. And that also in the pot route you must have seen in where the three communities. So these two communities are actually very vocal about their present uh, coordinates. That means they are living in a present latitude and latitude or a territorial or a geographical polygon. And so first, as, as Anita pointed out that uh, it's a Kongu Nadu is a present polygon. And then they say, no, no, we came to this place with uh, 49,000 or the uh, well dollars came. As a, uh, as a what you call the bride, uh, when she, the, the Chola uh, prince got married to the chair of pr prince. And then they say that there's a lot of uncultivated land. You have a lot of uh, extra farmers with you. So, and the Ponnoda on the Seer on it, Chitra. And the Kalyanamani could go Seer Gurbangala. In the in the Veralar Solanga, Nang one day, the Chera Princess would a Seer of Purda, Appa Vitla, the Seer of Purda. That means along with them, they migrate. So that Nama, the other one, Seer is at the Governor, Seer, Seer land at the Governor, Apotomara, very little Varan. That number also need not be accurate. The fact remains that we came from Chola country. And similarly, they say, Chola also, it was not our uh, origin place. Before that, we were in uh, Tondai Mandala. And then they stopped at that. So what I did that, I wanted to validate whether this is true. Then I took all the names of the Kungu and very important for them. What is very important for them? Number one, their territory name. Foundation village. founding first village, origin village. In the in the and then this Kani is a matrix. If you put it in Excel seat, you can see in this particular territory, only this, this, this Kani will come. In this territory, this, this will come. And this may overlap. This Kani may be, then Kani and the uh, territory will not overlap. It's always fixed. Then third element comes the demography, people. Number one, larger territory. Second thing, founding village. Third is the demography associated with. There are Kutam. 
the Kongu Galalar are divided into so many Kuta. Some people, there is no definite number about it. Some people say 152, some people say 128, and a varying number. You don't take the number seriously. X number of Kutam is there. So I created a matrix in an Excel sheet. What are the Kutam associated with which Kani? So that means you will find uh, there may be a few Kani's which will have associated only with one Kutam or few Kutam or something will be with multiple Kutam depending on the marriage relationship. One Kutam and they cannot marry in the same Kutam because they are all called brother relationship. Pangalita. So then uh, if this Kutam can marry with the, some other Kutam who are the mom and machan that will marriageable relationship. There are some Kutam may not get married to the uh, other particular specific Kutam. They may have uh, some kind of hierarchical issue. All put together, territory, county, and the Kutam is a matrix. Two is geography, one is demography. It is on mobile. It, the beauty is that it mobiles as a unit. So that means I first prove that whether they, whether they came from Chola, is there any common markers of place name? Uh, between this Kungu Nadu and Chola Nadu, I found it. Andiyur, Kangeyam, and uh, X number of places. Here also will be there, there also will be there. Then I matched the Chola with the Kutundai Nadu. Then I found the same name repeats. Then I looked for the uh, program and then found that uh, what are the names which are common to all the three. So then I found that. So then uh, I started believing that we are talking sense. So that means the story is validated by the traveling of the, not only the recalled travel of the people, but also the, the travel of the name. The name is becoming a marker. It's somehow we carry a DNA marker. The name itself is a linguistic DNA. Then after that, they stop the story. Beyond the Chekon Tundai Nadu, they do not know where they come from. So when I take that logic, it gets into the Karnataka, it gets into the Telangana Andhra, it gets into the Maharashtra, it gets into the Gujarat, it gets to the Indus Valley. So I will find, uh, suppose for example, in, in Karna, in, in, in uh, Kongu Nadu Pagadi, there is a Sakkarai Mandradiyar. There is a very famous family. They are in the political also. Uh, my friend Karthike Shivasenapati took me to the Sakkarai Mandradiyar family. That uh, one of the, uh, their family person used to be our MP. He was also, that Sakkarai Mandradiyar also was a minister uh, recently, in some uh, many years back in the government. So when I met him that day, everybody is written about this Sakarai. Sakarai means sweet. Uh, so then they have written poetry that uh, he is so sweet like a Sakarai. Then that is how the name Sakarai came. Then I told that sir, uh, Sakarai did not come because of the sweet. Uh, Sakarai is a place name in Indus. <laughs> so the Kangaya, like that, the, that means you should not get into the carried away by the meaning of the word. Then the etymological trap. So like this. And then I, I followed the uh, traders. Traders will always move. They will be mobile people. So their temple, they have uh, nine temples. And then all the Archi and the, those who are married into the families of the Chetiyar, they will not worship the temple of the husband. Because they are from the Velalar, they have a pact contract. That means the Velalar females will have the right collectively worship their Ancestral, parental side, mother side or father side, parental side temple. So that means in the Chetinadu, this nine temple division is only among the male. And the females will have a, their ancestor temple, which is will belong to Velala community, which is actually supported by the story of all the uh, Chetiyar, the Nagarata people getting killed uh, by the Chola king, only nine left out. And that nine people created a nine temple. So then their story says that we came to uh, Sivagangai, the present Chetinaru from Pumbuar. From before Pumbuar, we were in the Kanji. Before that, we are in the Nakanadu, Sadaya country, Nakara. Then when I take this one, it takes me via Karnataka, Maharashtra, and to put them in clearly in the Indus Valley. Like this, the Kandagi story. I traveled in the thing in the Gujarat side, the same type of story. And the plucking of the breast. If you if you just Google for one Nangeli uh, in Kerala, uh, then in Kerala Nangeli story is something like that. They were actually collecting tax for the breast. So that means till two hundred years back, women had to fight for the right to wear a blouse. That is called a. They were not allowed to wear a uh, upper garment in Tamil Nadu in Thiruvidangur Samastana area. They were fighting for it. 
and then there was a patch used to be collected from the female for the for having a breast and then 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 the kasadar and other people are supposed to go to them uh, to to just to measure her breast and uh, decide the quantum of the what how attraction and then this women from the hut uh, she comes out these people are waiting the story goes like this it's a 300 year old story there is a there's a painting has come you just to google for the nangeli of kerala and she comes out in a plantain leaf and cutting both the breast and putting on the plantain and give it to the tasildar take it and get lost i have not, no tax to pay no one what so that mean if you see this is a real story or the or the story thing always in indian subcontinent the cutting of the breast and throwing and uh, is a considered to be the uh, conveying the emotion of anger uh, uncontrollable anger so this story of this particular kannagi story i tracked this way kerala tamil nadu it gets into the gujarat and now if you go to if you go to say, sri lanka uh, both buddhist singalis and the tamils have one thing in common both worship kannagi both claim kannagi and then in the yes, in sri lanka people they only have the difference of opinion whether kannagi first landed in the eastern side or northern side but they both deny that after madurai incident kannagi did not go to cheranadu she came only to sri lanka imagine imagine there is a they claim that she didn't go to kerala and they say cheranadu she came to sri lanka so that means we should not take this as a historical truth we should not try to do a c14 we should only take a collective uh, input from it it indicates that people carry the story people carry the memories and then along with their names and identity even this vanni tree i tell you you remember that last week i could not attend the previous week i was uh, talking to you from the airport then from there i went to bangalore my flight got twice cancelled because of the engine issue then i had to take a flight to cancel my trip and went to chennai and the early morning flight to 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 kudi collector was waiting immediately i went in for three archaeological location and adichanallu sivagalai and korkai this reason they uh, before going for the meeting in tutukudi and return back so the reason for my this time going to korkai about 8 9 years back when i went to korkai the vanni tree concept had not sunk in me i had not uh, stumbled upon it so like any other visit i went to korkai and took my photographs from my mobile it's not a high resolution and then i returned back this time i went all the way to korkai to take a high resolution photo stand there near that pet vanni and take a photo and totally uh, get into the joy and i am right now in the final stage of finishing my tamil translation i am currently writing the forward for the tamil translation and i i do always symbolically i i typed the first line for the my uh, preface uh, for this tamil translation standing under the korkai tree in korkai standing under the vanni tree it is a symbolism do you know that what the people say this vanni tree somebody come and say 2000 year old another person is correcting no no sir it is not 2000 it is 2500 years whether it is a 2000 year or 2500 year or 1500 year it doesn't matter what matter is that that is korkai that is considered to be the ancient port that is where the conch shell found even now conch uh, sangam kulital even now happens muttu kulital even now happens and the sangam literature calls them as a korkayor the people of korkai pandi mannan is called korkai mannan and then there is a vetrivel tadakai temple located in that korkai she is associated with the kanagi and there is a vanni tree and imagine how much of symbolism associated with the, that korkai vanji kundi valaham which i have been talking why i chose the word korkai because the korkai is not known to any other literary tradition you go to you go to sanskrit literature you will not find the korkai you will not find vanji you will not find the tondi so i have to select a symbolism which will not be owned by anybody else which will not be claimed by anybody or anybody else so i selected korkai endorsed in the literature endorsed in the inscription and even now celebrated there i find my anklet my kanagi story my vanni story 
everything as if the i when i was standing in korkai village in thootukudi district i was for a moment i closed my eyes and put my first word for the preface in my uh, in notes at least i should sort a thing i felt i am standing uh, on just uh, on the on the on the cradle of history a memory i am telling you ultimately history is a narrative history is not a rocket science so then the this narrative when you build with the evidence and then is an irrefutable evidence how so were it's only approximate nobody can say accurately what happened and all but then even that accurate approximate narrative has to be based on uh, our faith and confidence and uh, our level of association it is not uh, not to say that but it's, it's an important my agenda is to basically we have to we have to first understand that everybody in this world is an immigrant everybody is the world is immigrant nobody should claim that now uh, i am rooted here for 5 crores years uh, i am my my whole existence is belonging this polygon in the map in this map i own this this house i own this village i own and i don't look at the world tamil was not like that tamil was talking about yadum ure yavarum keli thiraigadal odiyum thiraviyam thedu ethisai selinum athisai sore peride ulagam peenunar palare this kind of statement i don't think that any other literature around that time spoke this language and the language ethise selinu matise chore comes from a, a woman poet avaya avaya tells that you go to any direction and the world is wide and there is a multiple dimension so that is what is a guiding spirit that is why you guys all of you are in us singapore everywhere and we we spread we take the this particular legacy forward we cannot afford to be Uh, what do you call the narrow minded uh, people who will speak exclusivism we have to speak the inclusivism my i i work hard to spread this particular message the journey of because otherwise also what will happen we will get into the false narrative uh, we will start believing that you no know, we came from madagascar kind they say we some sunken island as if we are uh, unconnected with anybody it's a wired world i'll tell you we are thinking that only internet connected no no even before thousands of years man was walking from one end to another end we have to claim our legacy on the ground only you cannot dissociate indian history and tamil history separately the tamil history is an important parcel of parcel of the subcontinent history the if one literature which can be cited as a literature of the entire indian subcontinent that is only tamil literature only sangam literature because other literature doesn't know south and the detail whereas this literature know the all the area because it's a civilizational memory so we we have every reason to feel good about that thank you very much it's a phenomenal presentation anita i tell you and kavita uh, so sir i think we have wonderful uh, mr bahadurston and he is uh, been traveling uh, you're so grateful you could find some time to share his uh, remarkable thoughts after a phenomenal uh, presentation so the presenters are excellent so request all of the participants here who are here please tell your friends so that we have only three more weeks to go and make it uh, a grand success of like bringing more people and we have about 15 minutes please if there is a comment raise your hands through the uh, signal or any question and make it brief so that uh, mr balakrishnan or anita uh, uh, can uh, chim in any answer thank you Yeah, I think Uma Panir Selvam has a question. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Asaya, and uh, I would like to congratulate Anita Rajesh. Wonderful presentation. Thank you, Anita. And uh, I have only one question. Um, we were talking about the Nagratha community. I have a question about the Naganadu. What is the Naganadu from where they started? Like, uh, where is that place? and another question the second question i have is uh, anita was explaining a uh, kangeyam breed of bull right so uh, likewise we have umbalacheri kaligal like they are also called jallikattu kaligal do we have any place name related to that in uh, pakistan or in indus area so that's that's another question i have like kangeyam is a place name also right likewise do we have anything like uh, called as umbala cheri or cheri is there any reference to that particular place i will i will tell uh, uma i'll tell you the first question is that uh, 
first uh, the nag naga nadu and all honestly i don't get into that uh, whether naga nadu means whether is anything connected to cobra uh, i won't uh, because i won't risk that uh, i because the reason being i don't know uh, whether actually it meant uh, today i am using the word naga pambu mean i will say it's a naga mean co- cobra so some people will say that we are all earlier known as nagas then yeah. then there is another thing called nagar so then some people say that we are actually nagars and then another there is a naga land in everything uh, so i don't get into that for the simple reason okay we are the snake worshippers no doubt about it even now snake is worship the whole lot of snake worshiping cult in kerala if you go to that is a huge amount of uh, uh, cult actually in the thing is found in africa we are not the only people so then i don't get into that etymology because i may be wrong so i take this only as a n a g a is a collect yeah, that mean a a what you call a combination of a particular um, a vowel and the consonant in a particular sequence i can convert this into an algorithm or a machine based one and the b c c v v c c v and all when i give a tag of the for each vowel and each a consonant i give a tag a. we have tried that Uh, uh, instead of calling that as a naga uh, naga i think i will convert into a vccv what is the uh, v number c number so you when we put it that as a in the place name thing uh, whether it's accidentally coming or the algorithm based whether it can be statistically uh, uh, defended so i have done all this in the back end before even coming that the porkai vachi tundi i have done a statistical analysis random analysis selected analysis all the uh, all the thing i have tried it so that i don't know what naga means but the naga name the naga nadu but what you have see that always just you see the naga alone the tag the tag then you may be misguided okay some places maybe accidentally it may come but the naga comes with the sandhya and then sandhya comes with the kundrak kundrak kudi uh, and then it comes with the pugar then i have to take it seriously so that mean in the indus when i see pumbugar kanagi kovalan machat machat in machatwan is the uh-huh. father of the thing machat kovalan kanagi and then when i see naga then sandhya that mean i consider that is story cluster so that mean it has to have a cluster so that which i am able to defend so this cluster should not come in america the same cluster comes in america then i will give up my study okay i am wrong so that then i need a multiple evidence that means not a single evidence the korkai name has to tally the concept has to tally then it has to have an age okay korkai name i cannot do a c40 for carbon material i can do a c40 uh, for people i can do a dna analysis for name what do i do so that means i have to fix a minimum age so what is the minimum age for a korkai in tamil is a sangam literature so sangam literature mentions about the korkai that is the minimum age so i i do not know the maximum age then then uh, sangam uh, sanskrit literature does not know korkai mahabharatam does not know korkai ramayanam does not know the korkai then i will claim that korkai is unknown to them so then korkai is known to them so without korkai i cannot build my identity it's a close you won't believe it i have a strong but i will not write i will not claim i have a strong feeling that today what we call so mohanjodara and karappa and some other uh, port town near karachi so one of those particular port was kokai thundi kind of thing today the names have been uh, shifted in many places you change the name uh, islamabad i don't think that the name would have been 2000 year back it is a post islamic name so like that the name also get changed important places name get changed i don't know what was the old name of local is a port was it korkai but i cannot make a claim but i only know that this korkai vanji tondi tag is very very important and there is a place called madurai in that uh, and that particular area in the indus i don't even claim madurai because that it sounds like a madura then 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 that comes to madura is near uh, thing a madura is uttar pradesh and madura puri krishna then you get mixed up so i will not be able to defend my theory so i have to be very rigorously choosy about it so i don't know the meaning of uh, uh, naga your second question was about umbalacheri uh, yeah, is there a thing is that i'll tell you like there are two things in the normally you will find there which will be always associated with the place name 
one is that dress dress material sari or the dress material uh, you will have kanjipuram the moment you say that or sale paathutona kanjipuram aranya banarasa pochamballi abdin bol so this is a kure kure pattu kure yur sinala patti sinala patti so the dress material uh, particularly women's dress material will generally get tagged with the place of origin you will find banarasi kashmiri kind of thing then the word kalingam in tamil is in, used is 19 times in sangam literature the kalingam in sangam literature mean dress material is the name of the place the the maximum weaver in india the migrant weavers are from kalinga from odisha where i am working we have 9 lakh weavers working from ganjam district of uh, odisha living in gujarat in surat and doing only weaving so that been in sangam time itself this part of the people migrate and doing the weaving that is the reason the dress become kalingam even in tamil literature so that is when when we go that second one which is goes by the place name is the animal animal the for example that uh, you you see that what breed it is toda and the negri breed ermai then it will get into the mysore breed then the same thing ermai in maharashtra called satara breed then when you get into this uh, when you get into the uh, himachal it's a solan breed and then the agra breed darbari breed you you find the animals will take the name of the location it will be known by the place in in orissa i have something called chinika breed of uh, buffalo and then there is another thing called binjarpuri uh, breed of uh, uh, buffalo so particularly between buffalo and the cow uh, in my view that buffaloes have got a more location specific and uh, and second thing next is the bull have got a location specific like umbalacheri or the kangayam it, it goes like this whereas they you don't identify cow because the cow is a most uh, mixed up in india uh, the jersey and the foreign breed and all there is nothing called foreign breed buffalo buffalo is 100% sudeshi is a buffalo is 100% indian it was domesticated in india exported from india to elsewhere that is how you will not come across cross breed buffalo in india or anywhere else whereas you will find any number of cross breed Uh, in the cow in the process uh, between cow and uh, cow and uh, this is buffalo buffalo has got stuck to the location specific and whereas the bull has got a little bit of location specific cow lost its um, uh, its location specific identity oh, thank you thank but you but then then the recent study in kiledi which was done in decon uh, the paleo geological and the dna analysis Uh, it has shown that uh, what is the bone found of a cattle in Kiladi? It belongs to the Tamil Kali, uh, the Bagas Indigas. Then there is a two type of uh, Kali: Tamil Ulla Kali, Tamil Illa the Kali. Uh, and and the parathal kuda anitha udai parathal vande. And the Kali udai Tamil, one umba prominent character mari. And the Kangge in Kali lana stamp la kuda vande. The other basket itu or Indian stamp kuda ruke. And the Kali vande. ஒரு ஒரு ஃபியூ இயர்ஸ்க்கு முன்னால இறந்து போச்சு புலி பாய் அப்படின்னு பேரு காங்கேயத்துல இருக்கு அது வந்து திமில் வந்து ப்ராமினா இருக்கும் அதுதான் சிந்து வெளி காலை அது காங்கேய பறக்க வந்த பிரீட் கண்டினியூஸ் தேங்க்யூ சார் थैंक यू so much and uh, any one more quick uh, comment or question because it's almost uh, 10:30 10:40 in east coast united states please uh, raise your hand i saw another hand that was raised but uh, it's not raised now actually just one quick comment in the meantime if somebody decides to say a comment or question is please read the book um, i think it's worth reading both in english and uh, tamil both has its own uh, advantages just one comment uh, small question one wants to say something yeah uh, well, let, let me finish this comment this is when you when you read this book there are lots of jokes there so really fun comments for example uh, what he says is in the book if you see one name in gujarat one name in uh, uh maharashtra and one name in pakistan you cannot uh, make a, a sense out of it like he was saying and he just makes a comment like we cannot be carried away by this so literally carried away we, we are talking about movement and it's also like uh, two meanings it's really fun you can find lots of interesting comments uh, throughout the book and i really strongly recommend 
uh, read the book, recommend it to others, present to others. And when the Tamil release comes, so let's have that and we can discuss in Tamil in detail. I'm sorry. That's done. Thank you, Tamil Padakana, Munpadina Salitirka, so Kudi Varil, the Wangi particular or Aura Marka, Serba Nandri. Another Kelly Vandi, Rabu Puduana Kelvindre, or only a Kapina relate Pandan Terila. In India, Pavi, what the Nila Pavi, and the Africa, the America, I mean, Bogola India Paka, and the Possibly Nera the Etakan Larika, Argal Riki, and the Pudu Yam and the number what the Selumiana. Nagari Valachi Ilia, the Alindu Vita Nagari Valachi and the Ladatlime Tonu, Ipading and Nagarium, Sudanam of the Culture Civilization, our purpose of the Sindhuli Nagarium Gravada, what a Sindhuli Punbadana is Pandra. A seller one there, the confused under Punbadana Guru culture motor solo, civilization guru period is a solar than day. But Anna, I am bit I am bit hesitant to use the word Nagarium. Which I consider it's not essentially Tamil uh, rooted. That I, I use that Nagariyam uh, na actually perum Actually, then since I don't want to talk about a big or small, I developed a habit of respecting big or small. I have a very Nagariyam in the Vasikra Palamudil Merlir. And the Palamudil on the Urubadanai or Vashuma Tangurde, Pandbade Kapati, Aungadan Arisi Urubaknanga, Aungadan Kelvara Urubaknanga. Aumada, Moda Moda Mada Palakna, Aung on the Nick on the Namalamari pants at a port of port, port of Lingrakaga. I didn't want to belittle them. Adalavande, a period Syrian girl of the Pokama, so I used the word Punbad, Sindhivali Punbad, Tamil Punbad. In no, in the different location Nagari and Padina, Nile Nagari and Monde, Yinga one day irrigation Punde, assured irrigation Karachado. Assured irrigation Katacha Yatalada on the settled life on the Uba prominent top. Yapa on the substance and weird water the Kaka Valte. One day soft, Yapia the weird world. Adun the Namore or animal body, a Yaga the Vata Yarno. Ala the Adua Paricha, Adua Ka, Adua Molachurko, Koya Pala Molachurko, Mamba Molachurko, Pala Palarko, and the Parichi thing. Upper over no Pasiko, Muel or the Muel Mela or a villa, Richa Muel, Richa Man, Richa Sapra. Hunting and food gathering, there is no tomorrow, and the enough food cannot be preserved. And he cannot think about next year, and he will keep moving. This is one stage. Second stage is one domestication of animal. Then he will move with the mod. And wherever it goes, wherever it goes, he will go. And then wherever, then hunting and food gathering. Upper one of season get a marie purchase of Again, it's not a settled life. Upper one day, in a soldier marie family, worth and Kalyanam Bana, or a wife, upper one day, Ade Nelatala Vande Sutu Rime, Idana Yedime Tundirka. When it comes in a settled, when the man understood that Uru Vedaya Prote, I can take thousands of seeds. Adaude. Actual cultivation. Adorica on prevail. On prevail level, they catch the sapta. Upon the rain electla over were some three p three p pirated a murio, a binger of the Purinjigra again, Nalachi. Are the Yepa possibly in Yadina, Veru Malaya Matunambi, rain Matunambi Rundana, only during seasonal agriculture he can do it. But whereas if he store the water in the tank or the, or the dam and then, then a vital and moderate the water. Then he said managing the water, water management only. He has got a, he needs a less land, uh, repeated irrigation, more crop. So less land, more crop mean the land has to be closer to the house. And then the land has to be owned. And then Apala Mande, Nila Udamai were there, Apala Mande, the concept of the family, Apara Urta Kalyana Mande, Amande, Ingari Pain, and the land is given to the thing. Even though it's a product of, it's a settled life. So you keep it in mind. Where there is no settled life, there is no concept of settled culture. There is no concept of civilization. Civilization is not a settled agriculture. Where it happened, that did not happen in Indus Valley. First, that did not happen in Kaveri. That did not happen in Vaigai. In the world, such a thing happened first in Nile only. Nile in the Egypt. 
it is a clearly proved that the ancient evidence for the irrigated agriculture is found only in Nights first. Until the Sumerian uh, place, Euphrates and Tigris, what is today's modern Iraq. And that particular place is a huge agriculture thing. If the whole area is known as Fertile Crescent. Fertile Crescent is the Nile, Euphrates, Tigris. This is called the Levant area and the Fertile Crescent. Angala agriculture on the Roba settled. Then added to the Indus Valley civilization, more or less contemporary. Then if you go to the South America, the life of the Inca and the Mayan civilization is great. I tell you the kind of achievement in the construction, in the life, in the kind of uh, architecture they made is a phenomenal. But the Mayan and Inca civilization not properly documented because of the, uh, unfortunately, they were visited by Europeans and uh, they spread disease, they, uh, they, they killed languages and the aborigines in the Australia, they lost their identity. Uh, fortunately, then even in, is, is, uh, even in Niles and Iraq, then we got started, uh, started following a singular religion. Wherever singular religion spread, for example, I take the uh, Christianity and the Islam. Uh, I, they believe in the monotheistic religion. I tell you, the monotheistic religion, the missionary-based religion started only in this uh, South Asia. The first missionary-based religion is the Buddhism, Jainism, then Monism, and then it spread into the Romanism and the Zoroastrianism then Christianity, then Islam. Wherever there is a singular God and monotheistic religion, they were considering the other believers as an infidels or the enemies. So then in the process, the Christianity also, they used to go and attack anybody's secret worshippers, sabbaths. They will go and attack, they will change their name, they will baptize them, they will change their place name. I tell you, in many in Europe, okay, your, your name is now Korkai. Okay, from tomorrow onwards, you will be known as Amsterdam. Okay, you are a Vanchi guy. Okay, you are not Vanchi from tomorrow on. So it is actually reminding me of a pagan past. So you will be known as Paris. So now then, oh, you are a Balakrishnan. Okay, you are not Balakrishnan. You are a Constantine. So this is called baptism. And also in the, in the Islamic world also it happened. Whereas in a place like India, the tribal, their practice, their religion, it's all polytheistic area. So that means it's a continued to be uh, having an evidence, otherwise we will not have that evidence. So that way to answer in a thing, the uh, human civilization was thriving everywhere. In some places preserved, some places only the structure preferred ideology lost. Some places the ideology preferred structures are not available. Some places both are available. So it is for us to uh, try and reconstruct. <laughs> Thank you. And David. second thing, when I was in the Tamil in the Tamil translation, I was in full concentration. I work almost about except four or five hours I sleep. We are actually working either in the government or in the research. Even Roja Muthia Library also, we are not actually used for a publication and the marketing. We don't give, even, even, even JOC, there was no advertisement, that's like a promotion. We, we have no time. We also not interested. So it just happened three editions because people pulled it. So then we, the moment it's printed, I dissociated and moved to, I am already having another study. I'm going to do a eye of the South Asia. That is my next target. I'm going to be fully involved. So then we have a lot of problem, how to make it available to the abroad. Uh, and then they, when you give it to the Amazon, we want to give it the cost price because we gain nothing out of it. I don't take a penny. I don't take a royalty. I have given the entire book to the society. I have given to RMRL. They print it and give it to the cost. They exactly don't want a single penny loss, single penny profit. Cost divided by and they want to give to the people. But when we give to the Amazon, the price becomes double. They take about 50% or 50%. So that means uh, people, if they take it from the library, they get a very cheap cost. We also want these people to reach where they unnecessarily pay more. So we encourage this kind of booking or uh, because of that. And uh, then even for the abroad, I don't know with the overseas, a lot of people are talking to overseas citizen, but we are not actually, do not know what to do, what is the procedure for it, or some people take it in a bulk and send it, or what is the procedures in the different countries. But at the same time, but we are worried. Amazon has to be able to enter into an agreement with them for each country separately. If this book has to be sold in US, there has to be an Amazon-US agreement. 
then amazon canada amazon australia amazon gulf so we, we are we are actually at loss we have printed and we are keeping it the moment it is printed i walk the my next journey so it is, it is for the book to reach or with people to pull <laughs> you find your own method in australia some people use the some of the couriers in the sense that anybody traveling from uh, australia somebody will pick up some 20 books from the library anybody going to australia he will carry two books or three books like that yeah, probably we are doing that for the united states as well or you find out some methodology mm -hmm. or some books up or some some of your people uh, can handle it or uh, but we do not know let us see thank you balakrishnan sir uh, due to time constraints unfortunately we are unable to take any more questions so badra suresh and nadraj palniyappan could you please post your questions in the whatsapp group thank you so much there is, a, uh, there is a statement, there is a statement, I'll just take a minute, uh, so twice a message has been given by uh, Mari Muttu, yes. uh, please once again tell statements of inclusion in literature. Yes, yes, uh, I'll just take a, a minute, I will tell, since you have twice made that one. See, actually inclusion is a basically, a, a, is an opposition of the exclusion. Okay, you feel that a, a part of the whole and don't consider yourself as the whole. மொழி <laughs> அவங்க வந்து மொழிபெயர் பெயர்த்து அந்த மொழி வந்து பேசின இடத்துல இருந்து இங்க ரீலோகேட் ஆகி புலம்பெயர்ந்து வந்த மனிதர்கள் எல்லாம் இந்த நகரத்தில் சேர்ந்து கலந்து இனிது உடையும் புட்டாச்சிறப்பில் பட்டினம் பெறினும் அப்படின்னு பட்டினப்பாளையில ஒரு வருது அதுல என்னன்னு கேட்டீங்கன்னா அவங்க பேசுற டிஃப்ரெண்ட் லாங்குவேஜ் பேசுறவங்க அவங்க ஊர்ல இருந்து கிளம்பி வந்து இங்க வந்து ஒரு குவார்டர்ஸ் அமைச்சுட்டு இது யூரோப்பியன் குவார்டர்ஸ் இது ஸ்பானிஷ் குவார்டர்ஸ் எவனர் இருக்கைன்னு இருக்கு சங்க இலக்கியத்துல வந்து எவனர் இருக்கை தட் மீன் யூரோப்பியன் குவார்டர்ஸ் இருக்கு சோ இந்த மாதிரி வந்து நிறைய பேர் வந்து ஒரு இடத்துல இருக்காங்க பட் தேர் நாட் லிவிங் டாலரேட்டிங் ஈச் அதர் தே ஆர் ஹாப்பிலி லிவிங் அண்ட் மிங்கிங் மேபி தேர் டிரான்ஸ்லேட்டர் மேபி தேர் தே மேபி டூயிங் தி சைன் லாங்குவேஜ் அதே மாதிரி அந்த அப்ப இருந்த பீரியட்ல பாண்டிய மன்னன் வந்து நெடுநல் வாடையில வந்து ஹி சரௌண்டட் பை பாடி கார்ட்ஸ் உடம்பின் உர உரைக்கும் உரையா நாவின் படம் புகும் விளைச்சல் they are wearing a dress they can't udambin urakumna they can only speak through saige either they are deaf and dumb or they are foreigners they don't know the language but they are the bodyguards the indian indian kings around that time they had a great amount of 23 uh, 23 thing one is they will have a foreign bodyguard they will have some foreign girls to serve them in the wine thing and they will import some wine from rome idala vandu is a symbolic even today that continues that way Inclusion means basically in the literature. Yadu mure yavarim teilir. Inclusion. Peride ulaham penunar palare. Inclusion. Thraviyam, thraigadal odiyam thraviyam teilu. Inclusion. Jadi urandir, randoliya veri lai. Inclusion. So that means inclusion is basically uh, talking about the podumai, plurality, pluralism, multiculturalism. It is inclusion. Tamil literature no day, periyya perumaya vandhe. யாரையும் கேவலமாக பேசுறது இல்லை அதுவும் இல்லாம இட் இஸ் ஸ்போக்கன் ஃப்ரம் தி லாஸ்ட் மேன் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் வியூ இப்போ ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் வந்து சங்க இலக்கியத்துல வந்து ஒரு பயட்டுட்ட வந்து மாங்குடி கிளார்னு ஒரு புலவர் இருக்காரு அதை நான் ரிப்பீட்டா ஏற்கனவே சொல்லியிருப்பேன் கிளார்னா லேண்ட் லார்டு அவர் ஊர் வந்து மாங்குடி மாங்குடியை சேர்ந்த கிளார்னால ஹீஸ் நோனஸ்டுக்கு லேண்ட் லேண்ட் லார்ட் ஆஃப் மாங்குடி அவர் வந்து பர்பஸ் ஆஃப் ஒரு பொயட்ரியில சொல்றாரு புறநானூர்ல இஃப் யூ ஆஸ்க் மீ நேம் ஆஃப் அ ஃபோர் ஃபிளவர்ஸ் ஒன்னு <laughs> ஆனா அந்த பீரியட்லயே வந்து ரைஸ் இருக்கு நெல் இருக்கு இல்லதான் ரைஸ் தான் எல்லாரும் விரும்பி சாப்பிடுவாங்க ஆனா அவர் ரைஸ் வந்து அதுல போட மாட்டேன் 
ஏன்னா இது வந்து லாஸ்ட் மைல் நெக்லெக்டட் இஸ் அ புவர் மேன் கிராப் அவர் வந்து ஹி ஸ்டாண்ட்ஸ் பை தி புவர் மேன் ஓகே இஃப் யூ கம் அண்ட் ஆஸ்க் மீ நாலு குடி தட் மீன் ஃபோர் கிளான் இந்த ஃபோர் கிளான் பேரை சொன்னீங்கன்னா அந்த காலத்திலே ராஜா இருந்திருப்பாரு ராஜா இல்லாம தமிழ் சங்கம் வந்திருக்காரு அவர் வந்து பெரிய நான் வந்து ஆண்ட பரம்பரை அப்படின்னா சொல்லிட்டு இருப்பாரு இன்னொரு பெரிய வியாபாரி இருப்பாரு பூம்புகார்ல கொற்கையில மதுரையில அவர்லாம் பெரிய நான் வந்து பெரிய ஃபாரின் தொடர்பு வச்சுக்கவேன் நான் பெரிய ட்ரேடரு நான் பெரிய நகரத்தார்னு சொல்லிட்டு இருந்திருப்பாரு அப்புறம் இன்னொருத்தன் வந்து பெரிய வாரியரு நான் பெரிய தளபதின்னு சொல்லிட்டு இருப்பான் இதுல யாருடைய பேரையும் சொல்லாம இவர் வந்து பானன் பறையன் குடியன் கடம்பன் அப்படின்னா அந்த நாலு பேருமே கனெக்டட் வித் தி டவுன் ட்ராடன்ஸ் அண்ட் மியூசிக் பிளேயர் இவர் நாலு பேர் தான்டா இஸ் சன் ஆஃப் தி சாயில் அப்படிங்கிறார் அதுவும் போக எங்களுக்கு சாமி யாருன்னு கேட்டா கடவுள் யாருன்னு கேட்டா நாங்க வந்து எங்களுக்காக உழைச்சு எங்களுக்காக சண்டை போட்டு உயிரை விட்டவங்களுக்கு நாங்க ஒரு நடுகள் விட்டுருக்கோம் பச்சையா அதுல கும்பிடுறவங்க அவன் தான் எங்க சாமி அது போக நெல் போட்டு நைவேத்தியம் பண்ணி கும்பிடுற சாமின்னு ஒண்ணு எங்களுக்கு இல்ல நெல் உகுத்து பரவும் கடவுளும் இல்லவே நான் இதை என்னவா எடுத்துக்கிறேன்னு கேட்டீங்கன்னா இட்ஸ் அன் இன்க்ளூசிவ் He he is a well-to-do. He is a land-owning fellow. He belongs to a different caste. Where do you think? 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 Not in preaching. You can't do it in preaching. You can't do it in preaching. First, by annihilating your own caste. That means you have to come out of that particular ring. Then, you can't do it in preaching. That means you have to come out of that particular ring. Then, you can't do it in preaching. That means you have to come out of that particular ring. He is making that voice. I consider that to be the epitome of your voice of the last man. voice of the inclusion is an inclusive poetry other inclusion thank you thank you so much balakrishnan sir for taking the time out and being with us here every week in spite of your you know such a busy schedule and patiently answering all our questions i would like to call upon mr karu sir now please to please uh, give the word of thanks karu manik vasiramaiya welcome அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் மடை திறந்த வெள்ளம் போல் செய்திகளுடைய ஒரு களஞ்சியமாக வார வாரம் நம்மளுடைய இந்த பண்பாட்டு பயணம் மிக மெருகேறுகிறது என்று சொன்னால் மிக இல்லை அந்த வகையிலே ஒவ்வொரு வாரமும் பட்பல செய்திகளை நாம் அறிந்து கொள்ள இந்த ஒரு பயணம் உதவுகிறது என்று சொல்ல வேண்டும் நான் இந்த அளவிலே இன்றைய நிகழ்ச்சிகளை மிக அழகாக தொகுத்து வந்தவர்களுக்கு நன்றி கூறுவது எங்களுடைய தலையாய கடமை முதலாவதாக இன்றைய நிகழ்வு திரும்ப உமா ராம்குமாரின் சிலப்பதிகார உதலுடன் தொடங்கியது நமது தொன்மை தமிழனுடைய பண்பாட்டு பயணத்தில் இனிமை தரும் ஒரு இதமாக இருந்தது என்று சொன்னால் மிக இல்லை நிகழ்ச்சி தொகுப்பாளர் உமா அம்மா அவர்களுக்கு எங்களுடைய மனமார்ந்த நன்றி பாடல் ஆக இனிமேல் பாடல் இல்லாமல் நமது பயணம் இல்லை என்ற அளவிலே சொல்லலாம் மிக மகிழ்ச்சி அடுத்ததாக நமது வழக்கமான தகூட் விளையாட்டு எங்களுடைய குழுவினுடைய செல்ல பிள்ளை செல்வன் ராகுல் அதனை திறம்பட தொகுத்து பறங்கி இது பாராட்டுக்குரியது தம்பிக்கு எங்களுடைய பாராட்டுக்கள் நன்றியும் உரித்தாக வேண்டும் இன்றைய விளக்க உரை சிறப்பு விருந்தினர் திருமதி அனிதா ராஜேஷ் அவர்கள் பன்முக திறனாளர் அவரது அவருடைய இன்றைய விளக்க உரை வெறும் விளக்க உரை என்றல்லாமல் ஒரு அருவி போல் அமைந்த உரை என்று சொன்னால் அது அதிகம் மிகைப்படுத்தலாகாது வைகையிலிருந்து வந்தவர் என்பதால் அதிலிருந்து தொடங்கிய விதம் மிகவும் சிறப்பாக இருந்தது நூலாசிரியர் பாலகிருஷ்ணையா குறிப்பிட்டது போல இப்பண்பாட்டு பயணத்திலே கொங்கு வெள்ளாளர் நகரத்தார் இரு சமூகங்களுடைய இன்றியமையாமையை தக்க சான்றுகளுடன் விளக்கி இருந்தது மிக ஒரு சிறந்த ஒரு பகுப்பாய்வாக அமைந்திருந்தது என்று சொல்லலாம் நாடுகளுடைய எல்லையை நாடாமல் இப்பயணம் அஹ் அமைந்திருக்க இயலாது என்பது பல்வேறு விளக்கப் படங்கள் மட்டுமல்லாமல் இலக்கியத்தின் இடம்பெற்றிருந்த செய்யுள்களை எடுத்து கூறியது மிகச்சிறந்த ஒரு சிறந்ததாக அமைந்திருந்தன கொங்கு வெள்ளாளர் என்பதற்கான காரண பொருளை உரிய சான்றுடன் விளக்கியது கள்ளலை நீர் மேலாண்மை மலைக்கான பெயர் காரணங்கள் அனைத்தும் வகைப்படுத்திருந்தது விதம் மிக அழகாக அமைந்திருந்தது நகரத்தார் செட்டி நாடு காஞ்சி மாநகர் தொடங்கி காவேரி மண்டலம் வந்து பாண்டிய மண்டலத்தில் நிலைநிறுத்தியது வரையிலான ஒரு தொடர் நகரத்தார் பயணத்தையும் பட்பல சான்றுகளுடன் அற்புதமாக விளக்கியிருந்தார்கள் குறிப்பாக அவருடைய இன்னொரு பெயரான தன வணிகர்கள் வணிகம் எங்கு சென்றாலும் அவருடைய வணிகம் செல்லும் நோக்கத்தில் எங்கு செல்லும் பொழுதும் முருகன் கோயிலுக்கு ஒரு முக்கியத்துவம் கொடுப்பது தொடங்கி அவருடைய நகரத்தார் பண்பாட்டிலே உரிய ஒன்பது நகரம் கோயில்கள் திருமண முறைகள் 
நகரத்தார் பெண்கள் பெண்கள் குறிப்பாக ஆட்சி என்று சொல்லப்படுகின்ற செட்டிநாட்டு பகுதியில் ஆட்சி என்று சொல்லப்படுபவர்கள் சைவ திருநெல்வேலி பகுதியிலிருந்து சைவ வெள்ளாள பகுதியிலிருந்து அந்த சமூகத்திலே இணைத்துக் கொள்ளப்பட்டவர்கள் என்று சொல்லப்படுகின்ற அந்த செய்திகள் எல்லாம் நமக்கு தெரிய வாய்ப்பு கிட்டியது அஹ் காவேரி பூம்பட்டினம் கோவலன் கண்ணகி அஹ் அந்த வரலாறுகள் எல்லாம் நகரத்தார்கள் அவருடைய பாரம்பரியத்தை எடுத்துக் கூறியது அஹ் ஊர் பெயர்கள் ஒப்பீடு கா இன்று நான் அது தெரிந்து கொண்ட செய்தியாக நான் பார்ப்பது பாகிஸ்தானிலும் அந்த ஒரு நம்மளுடைய கரை காஞ்சி போன்ற பெயர்கள் அமைந்திருந்தன என்று சொல்வதெல்லாம் ஒரே செய்திகள் அறியக்கூடிய வாய்ப்பை அமைந்திருந்ததையும் அகழாக எடுத்து சூடியது மிகச்சிறப்பு அம்மன் திராவிடர் பண்பாட்டில் பெண் தெய்வங்களுடைய சிறப்புகளை வரிசைப்படுத்தி விளக்கியது கம் அம்மன் கோயில் பெண் தெய்வ வழிபாடுகள் எல்லாம் நம்முடைய திராவிட கலாச்சாரத்தில் எந்த அளவுக்கு ஒரு இடம்பெற்றிருந்தன என்பதை அழகாக எடுத்துக் கூறியதும் சிறப்பாக இருந்தது விதியாக வன்னி மரம் வெவ்வேறு பகுதிகளில் வெவ்வேறு பெயர்கள் இடம்பெற்றிருந்ததை வகைப்படுத்தி இருந்தார்கள் அந்த அவருடைய ஆய்வு மிக அழகாக இருந்தது மரம்தான் அதனை மனிதன் மரம்தான் என்று கவிஞர் வைரமுத்து கூறுவார் ஆக மரம் என்பது நம் மனிதர்களோடு ஒரு பின்னி பிணைந்த ஒன்று நம்மளுடைய பயணத்திலே மரத்திற்கு மிக முக்கியத்துவம் இருக்கிறது என்பதையும் அழகாக எடுத்துரைத்தது மிக சிறப்பாக அமைந்திருந்தது அந்த வகையிலே அஹ் இன்றைய அஹ் அனிதா அம்மா அவருடைய விளக்க உரை என்பது அற்புதமாக பல்வேறு சான்றுகளுடன் மிக ஒரு அருவி போல் கூட்டி அஹ் அற்புதமான செய்திகளை நமக்கு நம்மிடையே பகிர ஒரு வாய்ப்பு கிட்டியது அவர்களுக்கு எங்களுடைய குழுவின் சார்பிலே எங்களுடைய நெஞ்சார்ந்த நன்றியை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கிறோம் அடுத்ததாக எங்களுடைய குழுவின் மாணாக்கர் செல்ல பிள்ளை என்று சொல்லலாம் செல்வி அஹ் கவிதா சுந்தர பாண்டியன் அவர்கள் எங்களுடைய குழுவின் உறுப்பினராக இருக்கின்ற அஹ் திருமதி மீனா சுந்தர் அவருடைய புதல்வி அஹ் அவர்கள் இன்று அஹ் அவருடைய பிரசன்டேஷன் தேங்க் யூ கவிதா யூ ஹவ் பிரசன்டட் வெரி வெல் இவன் ஷார்ட் யுவர் கம்பாரிசன் தட் ஐவி மைக்ரேஷன் கொங்கு நகரத்தார் வன்னி கம்பாரிசன் வாஸ் அன் எக்ஸலன்ட் ஒன் um so well reviewed and presented very well uh, with a few examples a great job uh, we appreciate and thank you for that too adutha balakrishnan ayya avudi indri urai minavidai pagudi ena anaitum sakkarayaga amindirund endru sollalam ayya avudi kongu nagarathar venni pagupaivukku melum avudi karuthukal melum merugutiyad endru sollalam பங்கு அவர் குறிப்பாக ஒன்றை இங்கே குறிப்பிட்டு காட்டினார்கள் nagarathargal idai irumbe pangaligal பங்காளிகள் என்பது தந்தை வழி உறவுகளை எல்லாம் பங்காளிகள் என்று அழைப்பார்கள் ஒரு வளவு என்று சொல்லப்படும் வளைவு தந்தை வழி சொந்தங்கள் எல்லாம் இணைந்திருக்கக்கூடிய வளவை தான் அந்த செட்டி நாட்டு பகுதியிலே வளவு என்று அழைப்பார்கள் அந்த செய்தி எல்லாம் ஒரு அறியக்கூடிய வாய்ப்பு நமக்கு கிட்டியது வழக்கமாக ஐயா சொல்லக்கூடிய பொன்மொழிகள் யாதும் ஊரை யாவரும் தலை கடல் ஓடியும் திரவியும் தேடு போன்ற எல்லாமே ஐயா சொன்ன ஒரு இறுதியாக சொன்னது போல ஒரு இன்க்ளூசிவ் எல்லாருமே ஒரு இணைத்து யாரையும் வேறுபடுத்தி இல்லாமல் நம்முடைய தமிழர் தொன்மை பயணம் அஹ் அந்த காலம் தொற்று பல்லாயிரம் ஆண்டுகள் தொற்று இன்று வரையும் ஒரு இணைத்து பயணிக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு நல்ல சமூகமாக அமைந்திருப்பது நமக்கு எல்லாம் பெருமை அந்த அவையெல்லாம் நமக்கு வலியுறுத்தி கூறியவை ஐயா அவர்களுக்கு இந்த தருணத்திலே நன்றி ஐயா அவர்கள் அஹ் அவ்வளவு எளிதாக ஐயா அவர்களுடைய உரையை நிறைவு செய்தோட முடியாது அது கடல் போல் அஹ் உள்ள ஒரு உரை அவர்களுக்கு இந்த நேரம் எல்லாம் ஒரு சிறு துளிகள் என்றுதான் சொல்ல வேண்டும் இருந்தாலும் நேரம் கருதி நாம் சில நேரங்கள் சில மணி துளிகள் மட்டுமே எடுத்துக்கொள்ள அஹ் இருக்கிறது அந்த வகையிலே மீண்டும் தொடர்ந்து ஐயா அவர்களுடைய பங்களிப்புகள் இருக்கும் என்ற அளவில் ஐயா அவர்களுக்கு இந்த தருணத்திலே எங்களுடைய நன்றியை காணிக்கையாக்குறோம் வினாக்கள் உதிர்த்த திருமதி உமா பன்னீர்செல்வம் உமா அவர்கள் தெய்வேந்திரன் இருவருக்கும் மிக்க நன்றி கேள்வி மீண்டும் மேலும் மூவர் கேட்டிருந்தார்கள் நேர காலம் கருதி தொடர்ந்து அடுத்த வாட்ஸ்அப்பிலே உங்களுடைய கேள்விகளை பகிருங்கள் ஐயா அவர்கள் உரிய விளக்கங்கள் அளிக்கக்கூடும் அஹ் இறுதியாக அஹ் இந்த அருமையான ஒரு பயண நிகழ்ச்சி வார வாரம் தொடர்ந்து சிறப்பாக நடைபெறுவதற்கு ஊன்றுகோளாக இருக்கக்கூடிய உறுதுணையாக இருக்கக்கூடிய எங்களுடைய அத்தாக்கருடைய நிறுவன தலைவர் அரசு ஐயா அவர்கள் வட அமெரிக்க தமிழ்ச்சங்க பேரவை இரு அமைப்புகளுக்கும் என் தருணத்திலே மிக்க நன்றி அஹ் இந்த எங்களுடைய குழுவில் தொடர்ந்து பங்களிப்பு செய்து கொண்டிருக்கின்ற திருமதி மீனா சுந்தரவர்கள் 
uh, we will be will share the link once this week's session is available in YouTube for everyone to review. Um, so thank you everyone for we had a, I think I hope uh, all of you had a wonderful session again today. See you all same time next week and the topic will be on the games of our past chapter uh, 8, 15 and 16. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Nandri.